Oh, who doesn't like some good Korean street food? Today I'll visit a traditional market in Korea that might be the most popular amongst the tourists. I'm going to try all kinds of amazing food and tell you guys some priceless stories about pain, hunger, and love. So don't even think about skipping a second of this video. It's for your own good. Hey guys, it's me, your best friend Jimmy. Today I'm here in Namdaemun Shijang or Namdaemun Traditional Market. It's probably the most popular place for the visitors. Now, just because it's really popular doesn't mean the food here is good. So whether it's good or not, I'll find out for you guys. I want to start the day with this thing called hotdog, which is Korean pancake filled with sugar. And this one vendor right here was the most queued up hotdog place that I've ever been to. They were so popular that they were handing out umbrellas for people to use while waiting in sunlight. But if there's one thing you can't trust in Korea, that's other people's opinion on food. Or people in general. Just kidding, guys. They have three different flavors, vegetable, sugar, and red bean paste. All of them are about a dollar each, which in Korean standards now is honestly a fair price. It seemed that their signature items their vegetable hotdog, which comes glazed in this fruit-infused soy sauce. Not gonna lie, I haven't seen that before. I've said this a numerous times, but hot dog is probably my favorite Korean street food. So this one right here is sweet seed hot dog, which is like pretty much sugar with some nuts. And this is their famous vegetable hot dog. Now this business right here might be the most popular hot dog business in Korea. I don't know, is it overrated? Let me find out. I just took a bite, but I see no sugar. I was almost disappointed, but thank God they actually had a lot of sugar. I like the kind of hot dog that has like sugar oozing out of it. And this sugar hot dog, as I'm eating through this, I'm discovering more and more sugar. It was like 70% melted gooey sugar with a hint of cinnamon and pieces of peanuts. See, this is what I was looking for. More sugar. Compared to other hot dogs that I've had before, their hot dog was a bit thicker and more oily. So my cardiovascular system didn't appreciate it, but I really liked it. I'm really high for this vegetable hot dog. This is a flavor that they're really known for, and it's my first time trying it too. Oh wow, okay. Now this one, I can see why people are so crazy about it. It's got some fat ass glass noodles. I think the sauce that went in this was, uh, was actually the soy sauce that had like fruits in it. Hmm. Now the very idea of hot dog to me, has to be sweet, and this is not sweet. This is more like hot dog filled up with a Korean dish called japchae, which is glass noodles. But these glass noodles are extremely high quality. This is not over height. I can definitely get behind this. How about we try something different this time? A Korean style toast. So this thing called street toast or toast is something that a lot of people pick up as a quick breakfast in Korea. It's a simple sandwich like street food made from sliced bread, egg, butter, and other ingredients depending on what you choose. It tends to be very affordable, which makes it a perfect breakfast for the working class people. Huh, I think that might have been the first time getting shipped with the girl in person. But the girl was cute, I don't mind at all. She was also selling iced tea and iced coffee. Well, that's great. I was getting thirsty. Wow, that's some Korean street coffee and street toast. I hope you guys appreciate my Korean street fashion, by the way. So this right here is coffee. So when they used to say coffee in Korea back in the day, back before Starbucks came to Korea, people kind of assumed that coffee already has cream and sugar in it. And it's that old school, ancient Korean coffee right here. I haven't really had it before, so let me see what it's like. Wow. It's like if you triple the sugar for your cafe latte at Starbucks, that would be this. Now, I'm not gonna claim to be like a street expert of Korea, but what I know is that a lot of people on their way to work, many of them get this street toast because it's affordable, it fills you up. Honestly, I never had one properly before, so I'm pretty excited to try this. Okay, what does the street taste like? Wow. Pretty simple stuff. Eggs, cabbage, lots of butter, and a slice of ham. She nicely topped it off with some ketchup and sprinkled sugar. That little bit of sugar makes so much difference when it comes to the flavor. Hmm. Even in Korea, there aren't that many things that you can get for under $2. 
and for me to be able to get this for two dollars i say it's a pretty amazing deal talking about an amazing deal i found this place where you can get three bowls of rice and noodles for less than eight dollars supposedly this has been here for over 50 years okay not gonna lie the sitting space here is like tight to say the least like i'm like butt to butt with other tables but that's okay as long as the food is good so what's really nice here is that if you order one item you get the smaller versions of the other two menu so just by ordering one item here you get to experience other things that you might want to try like these so this right here is what i got the hand cut noodles kalguksu. it came with a side of cold noodles that looks pretty fantastic and some bibimbap so my helper here today got a spicy cold noodle and then the side of kalguksu that it came with it's almost as big as mine that's like enough to be a single portion by itself so after ordering one item each this is what we got for about 15 us dollars korean traditional food with big fat american portion that sounds perfect all right so the way you're supposed to eat this bibimbap naengmyeon or spicy cold noodles you pretty much have to completely mix it up I'm gonna add some slice of radish with it well I want to be able to tell you guys that it was fantastic but the flavor was almost too sweet to believe that it's spicy cold noodle and the noodles weren't chewy like they're supposed to be hey I don't want to be a hater what I have noticed though the spicy sauce in the cold noodles it's a little too sweet like surprisingly sweet not saying they're bad, but in terms of the pure quality, the spicy cold noodle was mediocre at best. I would hate to walk away feeling negatively about a local traditional restaurant, so I really wish that this kalguksu is better than that. So I don't know if it's because of the seaweed that's in this noodle. The soup of the noodle tastes very seafoody. And I can tell you guys that this was far better than the cold noodle. Nothing too crazy about it. Just honest good noodles. Us Koreans, we like to take a piece of kimchi like this. We think it's the best thing in the world. And then uh, we like to grab things such as noodles. It is a known fact that the patriotism of a Korean is fueled by three things. BTS, Blackpink, and kimchi. I'm kind of special so I have Itzy and Ailey in that mix too. My bias is Yeji. Okay, going back to the food. Let's try this bibimbap rice reddish and uh this green thing that's a kind of kimchi i don't know where it comes from once you mix everything up it's not gonna look as good but it's gonna taste better so how good is this one you know what something that i got as a little bonus item is really good my favorite was hands down their kalguksu which was simple but good the rest of what they had was generally okay but simply based on the portion and the price, I still think this is a great place to visit. All right, that was great food. The lady even gave me this on the way out. I'm gonna save it for when I get thirsty. On the other side of the street from the noodle place, they also had this extremely popular dumpling place. I'm not the kind of guy that likes to wait in line for food, but they got me by the balls by this thing called curiosity. So they only have two different kinds of dumpling, kimchi dumpling and meat dumpling. They kindly allowed me to film them making the dumplings and I was happy to see them making these in an extremely clean environment. Because you know, in Asian restaurants, the word clean and delicious don't always come together. They were constantly steaming these dumplings and selling them on the spot, so the freshness was guaranteed. Kimchi mandu hana rang, gogi mandu hana so when it gets busy, people wait for hours to get a dumpling from them. Is it all hype? Allow me to find out. This is their Gogi mandu or meat dumpling. I almost don't want this to be bad because it's like so popular. Mm. And thank God it was a good mandu. Just take a look inside. It tastes extremely clean. I feel like the ingredients are fresh. Now allow me to try this kimchi mandu. So this one's pretty much the same thing except it has some kimchi in it. Mm. The dumplings were still juicy on the inside, which I really liked. Now, I don't like to eat spicy food, so I typically prefer the meat dumpling. I would say this is equally as good, just has a little spicy touch to it. Now, is it so uniquely good that people would have to wait for hours just to try this? I I'm not sure. It's very good though. If you're lucky to be here when it's not too busy, 
definitely worth a try. Let's move on to the official king of Korean street food, tteokbokki. It's a dish of rice cake and spicy sauce, and it's the most common and arguably the most popular street food in Korea. Oh my god, that looks fresh as hell. Okay, so what's kind of cool here is that they have two different tteokbokki. One's a rice base and the other one is a flour base. She said the flour tteokbokki is a little better, so that's what I'm getting right now. It's gotten a little more expensive since I was a little kid, not gonna lie. But thankfully what hasn't changed is how good it is. And this is what makes tteokbokki even more amazing. Alright, so that's, uh, that's my deep fried pepper and deep fried jumbo fish cake seaweed roll. This is pretty unbelievably crispy. So by now you guys should know what you're supposed to do. Get some of that. You don't eat this by itself. Dip it in the sauce. Oh, oh. Crispy. I honestly like the fried foods more than the rice cake. So you guys can come have the rice cake if you want. In most of these tteokbokki stalls, you can get their warm odin broth for free, which is kind of cool. Would you like some? Eating tteokbokki in front of a stall like this, it reminds me of my childhood. I have to make a confession, guys. I've done some evil things as a child. I've only done it one time. I was like just any other Korean kid. I took piano classes after my school. I took that class for more than one year and somehow ended up not knowing how to play the piano at all. It's just that I didn't really want to learn. One day, my mom gave me an envelope with $30 in it. That was supposed to be for my piano school. Well, since I'm not learning anyway, that money's already going to waste, right? So instead, I took that money and just added it to my tteokbokki budget. That way, I don't have to waste my time trying to learn piano that I don't want to learn. And the money doesn't get wasted because I'm spending the money on some good, valuable tteokbokki after school. My mom still doesn't know about this story. She probably thinks I was a good little boy. Like I said, it's been a long time and she doesn't have to know about it. Now that I think of it, I think I had some kind of a learning disability because I actually don't know how to play the piano at all. And I know, I definitely remember going there for almost every day for one year. I'm ashamed. Now, this is my personal opinion, but tteokbokki is one of those things that tastes very similar almost anywhere you go. So this place was a pretty satisfying textbook tteokbokki experience. While I was walking, I found another hot dog stall, and it looked a little different than what I saw earlier, so I decided to give it a try as well. That one looks dry. Ah, <laughs> Got another hot dog. More of a traditional style, I would say. For sure, less oily. And with this hot dog in my hand, I would like to tell you guys a story. A story that I am ashamed of. It's my confession. I never told this story to anybody before. So I must have been like eight. There was a lot of evil in me. I was a different man back then. They used to sell this hot dog in a bundle of four. And my mom got four hot dogs for me, my older brother, and my younger sister. Now there's four hot dogs. It just so happened that when my mom got us the hot dog, I was the only one of us that was home. Of course, my mom got us that for us to share amongst us, but I knew exactly how things were gonna go. I get one, my younger sister gets one, and my brother's gonna get two because he's a selfish little d And I thought of this genius idea, and that was, since there's no one watching, I had that all by myself. Yes, I did. And my God, that made that hot dog taste even sweeter. Not because I had four, but because my brother and sister had zero. <laughs> Trust me, I wouldn't do it again. I learned from my mistake. I was still a little boy, you know? Hmm. That being said, the hot dog that day tasted very much like this one. Super sweet, kind of dry on the outside, filled with sugar on the inside. I love it. At this point, I was getting too full that I couldn't possibly eat more. So I decided to get a drink from this cafe instead. Maybe I should get that aloe 8 for my K-beauty. So here's my aloe 8. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like pulp of aloe in it. Of course, it has added sugar. It's super sweet. But I like it. While I really love it, I feel like it would be really great for these places to have zero sugar option whenever they can then I'd be getting these all the time. 
It's sweet, ice cold soda. So how bad could it possibly be? Mm. So I think that marks the end of my day at Namdaemun Market. So what do I think? Well, if you guys are looking for a place that's actually a great visitor experience, I definitely recommend it. But I think the pricing is extremely reasonable for a place that has a lot of visitors. If you ask me, do they have the best food? No, I would say their food on average is pretty good. But if you're looking for the absolute best tasting food, I think there's another market that's better for you called Dongmun Shijang. I made a video about it, so go ahead and watch it too. Also, don't you guys feel like my videos kind of getting repetitive, always going to similar places? And guys, I have a pretty shocking news, and that is, this might be one of my last videos in Korea. Because guess what? I'll be making my trip to Thailand in just a few days, and I'm gonna stay there for a little while to make content. Until then, listen to my songs on Spotify and keep watching my other videos. Goodbye.